Okay, folks, tonight I've had a question from a friend who's working in Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. I am working in uh, CC, Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So there's going to be some things that are going to be a little bit different. But this friend has asked about resizing video. And in particular, I think he's even talking about a video sequence that he's been working on and resizing it for a different format. Now, uh, there are some different ways you can do this. Um, but th this person, I think what he's really trying to do, and when I, uh, the way he's described his problem, is I think he's trying to nest a sequence inside a sequence and just doesn't quite understand how you do that and resize that sequence. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna show you a few things. I've, I've got, I did a walk in Charlotte last week. And so some of that video is 4K and some of it is 1080p. I did just various different sorts of things here. Let me see, this is, this looks like 4K here because I see I've got 3840 by 2160, 15 frames a second, 1499. I know that somewhere here I do have some 1080p. Here's a 1920 by 1080p in this Cam 3 here. Uh, I must be when I was driving, I shot some at uh, a faster frame rate. There's 30 frames per second, 1080p. So I've got some various different sizes of video here. And then also down here at the bottom, which I have as a, as a time lapse I've put together, uh, I was up on the, in the, on the balcony of the Mint Museum, so you can see how a lot of this I'm shooting a wide angle. I wanted to crop a lot of this out. So I shot it in, in uh, this is actually a, a very strange size. I, I made the sequence the size of the photo. And there's a trick for doing that. I could divulge that later in a second video. But this is this video is actually 4,000 wide by 3,000 tall, which is not even, it's even bigger than 4K, at least in height it is, not in width. So I've got the, 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 the point here is I've got three different sizes of video. I could even have 720p video that I, I didn't shoot that that day. I shot 1080p, 4K, and I shot a, a sequence of uh, 4,000 by 3,000 pixel images, which I've created a time lapse out of. And you can see these are individual photos. So the, the larger question here that my friend has is how do I resize that and get it in a new different piece of video? Well, this is a golden example here. Let's say I wanted this to be, this is 4,000 by 3,000, so it's huge. And let's say I wanted this to be in a 1080p piece of video and I want to crop this where you don't see all this concrete over here. Well, here's the way I might do that. And... Uh, you know, for those of you who are like real professionals in, in Premiere, uh, you know, don't, don't rake me over the coals of this. There's different ways we can pull this off. But to me, this is the easiest way. Uh, I'm going to go over here and say File, New Sequence. Okay. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to do a 1080p 29. Uh, I've got this set for 1080p 24, but I'm going to go ahead and do the 30 here, 1080p 30 ABC HD. And I'm going to say, we'll call this uh, Resize. Now, here's where the difference in Premiere Pro CC and Premiere Pro CS5 is. As a matter of fact, with, with Premiere Pro CS6, there was this trick here where anything you drag into it, like say I drag some 4K video onto this, this is a 1080p sequence, right? It's 1920 by 1080, but let's say I'm gonna pull 4K, which is the wrong size, right? Uh, it's gonna offer me the option to change the size. So I know this is a piece of 4K video right here. No, you know what, that's 1080p, look. Ah, my bad, let's get one that's definitely 4K. Got to find it. Okay, here's one. Here's one that's definitely 4K. So I'm going to pull that onto here. Now it's going to bring up a box and it's going to say change sequence settings. And so I can, real quickly, I can click on that and it will change this sequence to 4K piece of video, right? To a 4K uh, editing sequence. And all the 4K video will show up. Every pixel of it will. Right now, though, uh, he's not going to have the option if he's working in CS5. So I'm going to say keep existing settings. It won't even bring this dialog box up in CS5 or CS5.5. So here, what have I got? Well, I've got a piece of 4K video uh, that does not fit in that hole. That, that matter of fact, it's twice the size of this hole. I know that because 4K video is twice the size of 1080p. So if I click on this video in the uh, sequence or the timeline, and then I go up under effects controls. Now, if you're using, depends on what version of... Um, of um, Premiere Pro you're using, it might not be up here. I use my, my workspace that I use. When I go to workspace, I use the old CS 5.5 editing. So for my friend, this is going to work really well. Uh, I kind of prefer this over the new style, which puts stuff in different places here. It's still the same stuff. It just goes in different places. So I am, if this looks foreign to you, this whole screen setup, it's because I'm editing in the CS 5.5 
workspace. You can save the workspace you're in if you want to, and then you can use mine just so you can follow along easier. That's fine. But I know this will be the workspace he's working with. So I have clicked on this piece of video. Then up here under motion, I'm going to twirl down the motion. See this little, little um, triangle beside the motion? I'll twirl that down so that I can see what I've got. And since I know that 1080p is 50, I'm going to go ahead into the scale. I'm going to say 50. And now I should be seeing all that. Now, if I go down to 47, for instance, it should put black around the outside. And I've gone too small. Let's try it and see. So there you see, see the black around the X over here? That means I've made this too small. Now, there's different ways. Let's say you don't, you know, you, haven't, you don't know mathematically what it is. You can just resize. You can just start sizing. And you can pull. What I'm doing, I'm, I've, I've gone across the 30 here. When you hang it, when you get your finger across the 30 there, it allows you to click, to right click, or excuse me, left click on it, and just drag left and right. So I'm just dragging back and forth over the top of this right here by, you know, left clicking and dragging. So I could see right quick, you know, this I do mathematically know that's 50, so I'm going to say 50. So now what I've got, I've resized that piece of video inside a 1080p block, right? So then all, then all you'd have to do is at this point, if that's what you want, and you've got your piece of video the way you want it. That looks terrible. But anyway, I don't know what I was doing. I was just shooting out a car window, I think. Uh, I can go ahead and render that if I want that, or I can edit this piece of video any way I want to, and I can export it, and it will be 1080p, even though it was shot in... Uh, it will it'll also be, uh, depending on how you export it, it'll be 2997, 2997 uh, or whatever frame rate you want it to be. Right now, I have this in 15, or excuse me, 14.99 frames per second, shot with a GoPro Hero 3. So, you know, how would you do that? Of course, you click on your on your uh, sequence here. You'd say File, Export, Media, and it's going to bring up this dialog box. You pick whatever you want to use. Typically, if you're going to go into YouTube, you're going to go H.264. Uh, there's a preset called Match Source. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to look for something different. I'm going to go down to, uh, since I want to export. Now, I could, I could do that, but I, I kind of like to use some of these presets here. I'm going to pick HD 1080p 2997. And I'm going to look down here at whatever, uh, you know, uh, the target rate I want to be is as far as the bit rate to, to export. And you can see here what sizes you're working with. So you can know how much you can put in here. Typically, I try to get at least 16 megs per second because that's going to look really good on a Blu-ray disc. So I try to I always try to encode it at least that much. Here is this preset set for 32. That's pretty high, but that still would look really nice. That would be. It's, it's not bad if you're if you're trying to upload to YouTube. You have a two gig uh, data seal, and you can't put more than two gigs. If you had a long piece of video, you want to dial this back so that you can make the, make sure that this right here is going to be compatible with what can go on YouTube. I'm going to cancel this for now. And let's go more to a probably the, probably a bigger, uh, a better example even than that. Let's say you've been working on a sequence. Now, like, like right here, this is this is a big bunch of photos. And, uh, you know, so, so imagine if these were all little pieces of video instead of photos, though. Because I, I think this is what my friend's dealing with, is he's got a sequence that he's worked on. And he's got that sequence looking the way he wants it with titles on it. Probably he's already got his transitions and stuff built. So you imagine the same kind of thing here. Imagine that all these little little frames, which actually are photos, were pieces of video or something. And he has his titles uh, overlaid on that. And he has his uh, uh, transitions and stuff built between yeah, his crossfades and stuff in there. And wow, Tony, I've done all this work. And now this sequence is not fitting in this piece of video. How, what am I going to do? Well... The sequences work just exactly the same as a piece of video. So I want to go back on my resize here. And, and I know that that uh, sequence 03 here is, is that's my photo time lapse. So instead of pull, dragging a piece of video in here, I'm going to drag that sequence over here. So this is still 1080p. And this sequence 3 is 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. So it's way different size than my 1080p sequence here, right? So I'm going to pull this... Uh, this over here and put it in there. Once again, now this is not going to come up in CS5. It's just going to drag it over there, and, you, and you're not going to see. You're going to. It's going to crop your pixels. It, the pixels will really be going all the way out here somewhere. But all you're going to see is what will fit inside this window, and that's what he's describing to me that he's seeing. So I'm going to say again, keep existing settings because that's the only option it's going to give him. And there you go. So now uh, I'm not. I'm not where you can see these, but there you go. Now look, look. You, you saw what this was. This what it really is is this, right? 
So what it's done is it's, is it's just centered it up on that. So let's say that I want this piece of video to fit inside this window though. I want to get the most out of it that I can. Same way you do with other video. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go up under motion, twirl down the little motion thing here. And then I'm going to get over the top of the 100% scale and I'm going to pull back till I see about what I want. Let's see right there. See how that's that's 4.3. That's not 16.9. The aspect, because it naturally 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels is 4.3 aspect, right? 16.9 is what 1080p is. So yeah, what I was going to do with it myself and what I did do with it, it was I scaled it and I, I did the same thing he's talking about doing. And I'm going to go up to about, I don't know, 70% or something like that. And then, I, then what you got is you got your position here and you can slide these positions left or right. Like this one over here on the left, the 960 will take me left and right. If I, if I hold over that and left click and pull, check that out. See, I'm centering it up and get rid of all that concrete. The 540 is going to go up and down, right? So I want to get to St. James Catholic Church here kind of in the center of my photo. And maybe I don't mind that there's a little bit of concrete here where I can pull over a little bit so until, I, until I get to the edge. I didn't go to, I went to 68%. Let's say I go to 72%, right? And now I can get even more of that concrete out. I'm going to pull left again until I get about to that edge. I'm going to pull up a little bit. Now I can see the top of a bus or something. And there's St. James Catholic Church in downtown, downtown Charlotte all framed up just right. And so now what I've got, I've got a piece of video. Uh, actually, it's just, like I say, an image sequence. Uh, there we go. You can see what's happening. And I'll stop that. And once again, I can export this piece of video. I'm going to click over here to the to the uh, left, this piece of video, and right-click and do a ripple delete, pull it back to the beginning. And so there, what I've done, now it, it, so it matters not. It matters not whether it's a piece of video or a sequence. I can still go, now that this is a 1080p sequence, and I have this 4.3 humongous video in there. I've resized it. I've got it cropped the way I want it cropped. And I can go uh, click on here again, say File, Export, Media. Same as the other. I can pick whatever kind of, of whatever I want to do. I've got 1080p or HD 20, 1080p here. Or you can pick some other preset or you can create your own. And, uh, you know, say you want this to be 18 instead of 32. And since it's, it is a variable bit rate, you might go to, I don't know, 24 or something like that. And you can have a 22 megabyte piece of video. Now, if I had a humongous amount of video, say I had a seven or eight minute video, I've done this with some of my Charlotte walking tours, then I have to, to dial this in once again to where I can get the most uh, quality that I can out of this. The other thing I typically do a lot, I do check use maximum render quality. It takes longer to render, but you do end up with a kind of a nicer uh, version of your output when you go to do this. So if I wanted to output that 1080p and just crop right there, that would work just great. And I'm going to say cancel again for right now. Hopefully this answers the question. Um, if it had been 720p, uh, you know, I could have I could have resized that. I could pull a piece of 720p video in that and blow it up. And you know, even that doesn't look bad. I don't recommend blowing up a whole lot. 720p video does not look terrible, though, blowing up to 1080p if you want to you know, put it on a Blu-ray. Um, you know, it's just better if you shoot 1080p or higher. And so the GoPro Hero 3 offers me these options of shooting the 4K or shooting uh, 2.7K or 1440p. These are all different you know, sizes. The 1440 p really is... Uh, like 1080p, it just has more pixels at the top. It's almost like a 4-3 ratio, but it's still 1920 this way. So folks, uh, hopefully this has not been a confusing tutorial. I try to keep them simple. If you've got questions, if I'm not being clear about something, send me a, a question. Don't mind helping. Uh, the one comment that I get a whole lot is, dude, why don't you have a screen capture device? Well, you know, I do have a screen capture device. I have the Camtasia Studio. And I've played with it, used it. Uh, I like to point at screens. It's just more organic for me to be able to point at something. I know maybe it's somewhat aggravating for the people watching this, but hey, that's the sandbox I play in. You just got to deal with it if you're here hanging with me. So I'm um, just an old school, old fashioned weird dude. So Tony Lee Glenn signing off. Happy videoing to everyone and editing. And uh, once again, I'll try to be any help I can to anybody. Just uh, give me a shout, ask me a question, and uh, I'll see what I can do to help. Thanks. Be good. Cheers.